Hi and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. Some time ago I picked up this helium neon laser tube off eBay really really cheaply. Now they're practically giving these things away these days mostly because you can get high power laser diodes that for most people will do what they want it to do. Uh, but I wanted a single frequency, um, a, a known frequency, in this case 632.8 nanometers. Um, so that I can uh, set up a spectroscope and do some actual measurement of lasers. Uh, obviously I need a power supply to run this thing and power supplies on eBay it seems to be the things that are really really expensive. So I built a quick and dirty um, ZVS driven power supply here. So let's stick it on the bench and take a look. So this is the JDS Uniphase Helium Neon Laser that I picked up off eBay. Uh, for a really really good price. These things are going dirt cheap these days. Nobody wants them anymore. Uh, you can get high power diodes if you really really want um, very bright lasers but I wanted one that emitted light at a specific wavelength uh, so that ultimately I can calibrate a, a spectroscope. Uh, the model number is 1125P and if we look that up online and I'll link in the data sheet below uh, this actually emits 5 milliwatts uh, of light at 632.8 nanometers. Um, it's got a 500 to 1 polarization ratio uh, the problem with these things is powering them. You'll see there's a, an Alden connector on the, on the end here. The smaller one uh, is actually the positive and the larger uh, connection there is the negative. These require 2300 volts uh, to, uh, to, uh, to run the, the laser is essentially at 6 milliamps uh, of current. And to actually start these you need somewhere greater than about 5 or 6,000 volts in order to start the discharge. Um, obviously uh, you need a power supply to run these things and you can find power supplies on eBay but for some bizarre reason uh, they always seem to be greater than £100 so I have in fact just built my own. Um, I've done a, a quick and dirty power supply using a ZVS driver. This is the homemade power supply for the 5 milliwatt helium neon laser. I've got an old and female connector on the front there uh, I've got a DC input jack because uh, we're going to power this off of a small DC supply and a milliammeter on the front so we can keep an eye on the tube current. Internally there's very little to it. Um, I've got a, a, a standard ZVS driver, you can pick these up off eBay for next to nothing. Um, I've got a DC flyback transformer and it is important that it's, uh, it's one of the DC types out of colour monitors. I've got a pair of capacitors that are actually wired in parallel underneath there. Um, these total about 0 0.04 microfarads. And then I've got a very large ballast resistor uh, comprising of uh, many 2 watt resistors. This is actually 80k in total. Uh, you need a ballast resistor with these things because once the tube, once the discharge strikes, um, as it were, so, so imagine you've got like helium neon laser tube and you've applied high voltage to it. Initially the impedance of the tube is very, very large, you know, like gig ohms maybe. And then, and then when the tube strikes, the resistance actually drops uh, quite significantly and it will actually um, it, it will consume as much current as you can sort of pass into the tube so we need a way of limiting that and we do it very simply with a, a, an 80k resistor. Uh, that's pretty much it. If I pull up a, a diagram real quick of the power supply itself, uh, this is it. It's a quick and dirty dead simple ZVS power supply. I've got the ZVS driver over here. Um, I've got my line output transformer in the middle which is represented by the, the usual transformer signal uh, uh, symbol with a diode on it. For the primary side, normally with ZVS drivers you'd wind say 10 turns on the primary because if you're doing things like Jacob's ladders or Tesla coils or whatever you want to bung as much uh, current through the primary as, as possible. In this particular application we want to control the current, we don't want it to run away. Uh, so a quick and dirty solution to that is to just wrap twice as many turns uh, for the primary. Uh, this is then fed into our smoothing capacitor, uh, as I've said pre previously, uh, 0.04 microfarads. And on the positive lead we have our 80k um, ballast resistor. On the negative side of the circuit we've got a milliammeter and that's literally it. Uh, the catch with this, um, as I've said before, ZVS drivers will run away. So if I, if I connect this up to a, like a 15 volt supply with unlimited current available, it'll probably draw like 4 or 5 amps. Um, this will cook. Uh, the ballast resistors uh, to the point where they actually burn out so we need a bench supply uh, that we can do some current limiting on. Now suppose if I could have been really bothered uh, I could have built a, a switch mode power supply to to drive this section as well that you know that was current limited but um, honestly I've got a bench power supply and any decent electronics lab should have one anyway. So that's literally it uh, in a nutshell. We'll connect it up to the bench supply and power this thing up.
So this is a Raiden ID6006 power supply that I'm just using to drive this. I'm using this particular power supply because it's got current limit on it. I can set the voltage and set the current through the front panel there. Uh, currently I've got it set to 16 volts, uh, just over two amps, which should be enough um, to, to strike the tube. So you can see uh, the moment I plug uh, that in, uh, the voltage has dropped quite significantly, but we're drawing, we're drawing 2.1 amps and the, the laser has indeed started. So let's switch back and take a look at that. So here's the helium neon laser powered up off of the homemade bench power supply. Um, we've got a really nice uh, Gaussian beam profiled spot on our target here, which will be just perfect for the application I want to use this for. Um, we can see on the power supply we're drawing 6 milliamps. Uh, which is exactly uh, what this tube requires. If I lower the, uh, the input current from the power supply, we'll see the needle uh, start to drift down towards four milliamps, and eventually we'll reach a condition where there just isn't enough current to sustain the discharge and the tube will start flickering. So if I turn it down, and we can see we're at about five milliamps now, and then we've reached a point where we can no longer sustain the discharge. So really, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a quick and dirty and easy power supply to build. And so long as we keep an eye on the amount of voltage and current that were, or DC voltage and current that we're supplying uh, to our ZVS driver there, we can run this tube perfectly well. Um, really, really excellent. Thanks for watching this episode of Les's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.